we can argue till we're blue in the face about us being more important, about being more trained, about being more skilled, about health being more important than hair, but we will never be chemistry. And that's what's happening inside this person's body every time they have an option of physical therapy, hairdresser. Physical therapy, ease pain, fine. But it probably takes a long time. It certainly takes days and weeks for most people. Hairdresser, $50 to the person who cuts the hair. Instant gratification from everybody that they bump into thereafter. So the question was, I've had a problem with patients counselling a lot recently. One in particular was for a hair appointment. So what are your thoughts and how can I stop it? So my thoughts are this, it doesn't surprise me one bit, not one dot does it surprise me that a um, physical therapist having a, a problem with somebody counselling for a hair appointment. Let me tell you why. Because people are simply more motivated um, by how they look than how they feel. Not many people leave a physical therapy appointment having paid $150 for a session and are then complimented within half an hour on how great they look. Contrast that with going to see a hairdresser. You hand over the $50 to see the hairdresser and within half an hour, all of your friends and all of your family are telling you how great that you look. That is a chemical reaction going on in somebody's body that they are addicted to, okay? We can argue till we're blue in the face about us being more important, about being more trained, about being more skilled, about health being more important than hair, but we will never be chemistry. And that's what's happening inside this person's body every time they have an option of physical therapy, hairdresser. Physical therapy, ease pain, fine, but it probably takes a long time. It certainly takes days and weeks for most people. Hairdresser, $50 to the person who cuts the hair, instant gratification from everybody that they bump into thereafter. Every single person um, is addicted and is more likely to move towards that if and when they don't see the value in the other thing that they're plugged into, being physical therapy. So here's what I'd say. I'd put it to you that it's a value problem, but it's a very normal thing that's happening to a lot of people on a daily basis. But in physical therapy world, it's very common and it happens a lot in, um, in home care PT and it will happen a lot for people who are referred to physical therapy from doctors. It's back to the age old problem of the real, real, real problem with doctor referrals is they're not always committed to buying into what physical therapy clinics actually do. That's because the doctor who sends them there doesn't know what physical therapists do either. So when patients arrive the next day, they're quite excited because they've received a referral from the doctor and they are closer to getting what they seem to be or they think to be um, a solution to their problem. So they're excited, they're happy. And then all of a sudden you drop the bomb of needing $500 in excess or, um, re or um, copay or deductibles on them and there's a little bit of pushback. And from that point then, because they haven't understood the true value of physical therapy, they're not completely committed. They will say yes, and they will have one or two sessions, then they will cancel, then they will show back up, and then they'll cancel, and then they will show back up. And this whole thing goes on. But it never happens, I don't suffer these types of problems because we use the education-based marketing philosophy where we spend two or three weeks educating consumers so that we help them make their own decisions about the value of the exchange that we give them. Now that exchange is money for our skills. So we have a process in play two or three weeks prior to any appointment where people see the true value in what we do. Therefore, they come to their own conclusion over the reasons they're giving us the money and they can hold on to that feeling of how great they're going to feel and the fact they're going to be able to walk further for longer, they're going to be able to sleep better at night with less back pain um, in just a couple of weeks' time. And, 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 it'll go back to your evaluation techniques. If in that evaluation technique you haven't told them exactly what's going to happen if they do cancel and you haven't even threatened them in a nice way that if they don't arrive for every single session, the compound interest that gets built by having an appointment on a Tuesday, a Thursday, the following Tuesday, the following Thursday, is what's gonna help them to get better faster. So, it's an evaluation problem. 
it's an authority problem and I know that not many physical therapists have the balls to have those types of conversations where you look at a patient in the eye and say, this is what I need you to do. And if you ain't gonna play ball with my treatment plan, please go somewhere else. So you gotta get the authority, you need the nature system in play that before a patient arrives at your practice, they are fully, fully, fully aware of the value that you're gonna to bring to their life in exchange for the $500 or $800 that they might have to pay you. And you need to move away from uh, referrals from doctors. That's part of the problem, it's part of the disease and as copay gets bigger, as out of network costs get higher, as deductibles get bigger, these problems will be rife in physical therapy clinics all across the world simply because they are now paying more, they need to feel more value before they will give you the money. And if you don't, I promise you, you will lose to the hairdresser next door. Here's what, here's what I would say on it. You've got to move away from having confidence in a script to having confidence in you. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing to do with the script. It's your ability to synthesize a script. And when, and if I only, if I give you seven words to ask, or seven questions to ask, and you ask them, it'll work. But the best way to make it work is when you understand the bigger, higher goal. So that if you do get a care ball, and somebody does ask you a question, it doesn't matter, because you can come back to it, because you know what you're trying to achieve. Whereas when you try to just copy a script, you will always get caught out. You'll always stumble, you'll always forget, you'll always lose track. Understanding the process of, of ultimately how are we trying to make this patient feel at the end, how are we trying to connect, how are we trying to engage, is more important than following the question. So move away from, from even relying. Like the script isn't the issue, and the script isn't what it wins in the end, it's your ability to understand. It's a, like this, going into it in depth with that script, you're trying to make a chemical change in a body. That's what it does. Like seriously, that's a science behind why that works. Mm -hmm. It's not just a bunch of words in order because Paul thinks that they, mm -hmm. whatever. They are designed to make somebody feel a certain way. And when you feel a certain way, you're more likely to say yes or no to something. It's not the script itself, it's what the script is trying to achieve. It's what the script achieves. There's a higher level than that. Words are the most powerful thing on earth. They start wars, they end wars, they start marriages, they start election campaigns, they do whatever. Words on paper in the right order make people feel a certain way. So the question then becomes how, how, which words and in what order do we have to use to get people to feel the way that we want them to feel about themselves. And ultimately what we're trying to do all the time is make them see true value of what we do. So that we never have to push, we never have to pull. It's literally just keep them moving forward. So you've made the phone call. You saw us on the website, you made a phone call, you made the agreement to come in, you came in. What happens at most clinics is then there's like this stop, this like, oh, I kind of, I'll go with this and I'm feeling quite good. But I really like the sound of those nine sessions or those six, six sessions, even though I need them. What you're trying to do with a script and an evaluation, and it's the same on the first phone call, and it's, it actually happens with the website, with the marketing. What normally happens in most clinics is they'll get to a point with the patient where the patient in the first, I would say the first five interactions will go through the motions. They don't really want to be there, but they're doing it because they kind of have to and it's like, uh, like this is a bit, I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I'll go along with it anyway because I don't think I've got any other options for this back pain, neck pain or knee pain or whatever it is that I've got. So the chemical in the, in the way that they feel with that isn't great, which is why, it's like the buyer's regret thing. It's like, like do I really have to do this? I'm not quite sure, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get it, and I've got like 28 days to take it back. Like that's the turmoil that people traditionally live with, like on a daily basis. So it doesn't matter what they're buying, TVs, holidays. How long does it take them to make decisions? Some people are like, oh well, we've been thinking about buying a telly. Well, how long for? Oh, about six months now. Like for fuck's sake, it's a telly. Like buy it. But that's the way. That's the way we make decisions. And then there is a period of regret after it. And what I've seen in most clinics, from wherever I've been now, there's this thing that it's excitement at the beginning because they made a decision. Then it drops off because it's regret and it's like, shit, this could go either way. Then it's what could happen? Am I getting ripped off? Do I have to take my clothes off? Is this going to work? Am I going to look silly? Should I have took the doctor's advice? Should I have just took pills? It would be cheaper. My husband said Cairo and I chose physio. My girlfriend or 
husband or partner or wife or whoever just said like do some exercises from YouTube like this crazy shit is going on in their head all day all day Round about session three or four with us is where the chemical starts to feel pretty nice because it's like, mm, this is pretty good. They're not going to rip me off. They're not going to touch me in the wrong way. They're going to do everything that they told me. Like, the money thing seems to be fine. The girls are nice in reception. I'm starting to see one or two benefits of the treatment. So the chemical comes back up between session three and six. Round about session six, I don't really know why I'm here. The pain's gone now. But this guy told me that. Why? They don't remember what they felt like at the beginning. It's just the way it's just the way it is. So the sweet spot is round about session three, right? So then the goal becomes that's and that's just a drug, it's just a chemical that's going on in their body because they feel comfortable. So the goal that you all have and, the, and aided by the script is how do I take them from where traditionally in most physio clinics they feel at session three? How do I make them feel like that? First of all, look on the phone, and then again in here. That's your goal. That's your job. Hey Justin, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. How's New Jersey? It's uh, pretty rainy today. Looks like uh, looks like the UK. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, question for you: I had a referral that called, and I took him through the whole process as we, you know, I discussed engaging with him on the front end, and yeah. you know, insurance, finances, nothing, none of it came up. And when it came for that time to kind of you know move the next step, I. I went right to the discovery visit okay. I said I offered discovery visit. Now, I don't know if I should have said, well, here are the, ch you know, here's what a first visit is, here's this, or I just want to just worry about getting them in the door. And like, I, I didn't know if I kind of lost the first visit because I didn't, you know, I'm not sure how, when they don't say it or I don't say it, like, is it better to tell them what it charges and go backwards or just tell them I have a discovery visit and come in? You took, you did the right thing in my opinion. So I just had this, I had a coaching call two minutes ago. Well, just before this call with Jason Miller, he's probably on this call now. And here's, here's what he said to me. Um, like since he's been through all of this with me now, where it's all about the, 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 the gaming business is in the long run. Okay. The guy that sets himself up to win in the long run wins more often than not. And that's all business is. Okay. You can't win every game every single time. So what he said to me, and I'll put this into context for you was this, he was in the gym. Um, he was in his studio, you know, the, the CrossFit studio that he goes to, and a guy in the in the changing room said he'd hurt his shoulder, and he said three or four weeks ago, what I'd have done is I'd have pushed him on on an appointment, and the guy would have turned up for an appointment. He probably would have turned up for an appointment, but what what would then happen is a session or two in, after he's landed a thousand dollar um treatment program on him, he would back out because he makes an excited decision. Okay, he's made a decision with um. In, in you know the cold light of day where he's got a problem with his shoulder, Jason comes along and says, I can fix that. Oh, great, great, let just solve it, like fix it. Then he arrives for a, a session, okay, and gets told he needs $1,000 worth of physical therapy treatment to solve it. Boom. Okay, there's your clash. So what Jason done now and what he did with this guy, hey, listen, um, I can help you. I have this amazing free report that helps people with neck and shoulders. Why don't I give it to you? You know, in fact, go to the website, get the information, take the information now. Um, and then whenever you're ready, you know, we'll maybe give you a call in a few days. Whenever you're ready, um, we'll do we'll do business. OK, the guy emailed him within a week and said, I'm ready. Arrived at the practice, agreed to all the appointments, paid up front and has gone on to be a great patient. So the moral in the story is when. You, you don't want excited buyers. You don't want people who just say yes because they've, they've, they're in a great position at that moment. You want a buyer who has logically and methodically come to his own conclusion that you're the right person. Now, that that's the equivalent of, of I, I explained it to him, going into a store and the guy saying that you need this telly, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's going to be the best thing. And do you want it? Yes, I want it, but it's $1,000. Oh, I really want it, but I just haven't had enough time yet to think about it. But if you say to me, hey, Here's what we should do, okay? This same tally is $1,000. Why don't you bring your kids down at the weekend? We'll get some popcorn. We'll put the lights on. We'll have a nice big couch in front of the TV. And what we'll do is we'll put Disney on the TV. We'll all sit down and we'll have a great time watching the TV. Take as long, take 20 minutes, half an hour. Turn the volume up. Put your 3D glasses on. Like, just, just chill. Just, like, be just king of the world for 20 minutes and half an hour, you and your family. Am I more likely to buy that TV after that half an hour experience? Than I would be if he just says 
He's a TV and it's a thousand dollars. Yeah, after the experience for sure. Correct. Correct. Not just that. I'm probably then gonna go. What else have you got? What else mm-hmm. do you What else do you sell? Okay. So as a business owner, you have a choice. You live in a world of short-term day-to-day profits, which 99.9% of this lot out here do, they, and they love it. Like they just want money, and, and it's not because they're greedy or anything else. They just think that that's what business is. They just think that business is about profits. But you get more profits when you live in the long run. In the in the long the long game, you will always, always, always win. So back to your question of, do you um, should you have moved them into a, a, a paid for free fair session? No, why? Like I, honestly, to me, if you need to go back a step to ensure that you get 15 steps, I, I'll play that game all day, all sure. all day. Because I know without any question, and this is what you're all starting to find out now, um, you will win in the long run when you give people information. People who tell you they've got no money all of a sudden find money. It's, it was never about money. It was the only thing they knew how to protect themselves from. So for you, definitely, if in doubt, take them back. After our discovery session, we don't let them book. Even if they say to us, um, I'm happy and I want to go ahead and I want six sessions or nine, we don't let them. One step at a time. So discovery to gold or silver. From gold or silver, then to plan. Make sense? Yeah. Because because yeah. I, I just don't want to, I don't like excited buyers. Excited buyers are great. And, and that's what a lot of people get. Like a referral from a doctor is an excited buyer, basically. 